good afternoon. So uh, t today, um, this time we are going to interview Mr. Mohamed Atikozaman from University of Oklahoma. Okay, so uh, what are you dealing with? I'm a professor of computer science at University of Oklahoma. So I teach courses in data networks and computer organization. And my research areas are wireless networks, satellite networks, uh, ad hoc networks, mostly related to networking and communications. Okay. Um, today you did um, a speech about uh, satellite connections, basically satellite broadbands. Um, so uh, can you please briefly uh, describe us uh, what happened in this field within the last few years? Okay, the, uh, the research problem was to uh, connect the internet to the space, and this was a project I have been doing with NASA for uh, quite some time. Basically, we want to find a scheme where we can download data from the satellites using the internet protocol, because that will allow us to learn or allow us to run a lot of applications which are based on the internet protocol. That will give us flexibility. And uh, the sort of particular topic I'm involved in is the handover and the uh, mobility management. And uh, we've done quite a bit of work, and our work also involves implementation in a satellite environment in the lab. So uh, we are very much into applied research rather than just theoretical. So we test our theoretical research using uh, experiments and also uh, using equipment which are really existing on the satellites, but we have copy of those. Okay. Um, so uh, if we compare this kind of uh, connection to uh, things that happen, let's say, in, 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 in uh, the cellular connections, right? LTE, for, for instance, um, where are the biggest differences uh, technically? I think uh, in a satellite environment, uh, long propagation delay is one big issue. Uh, so the internet protocols which work in the terrestrial environment uh, don't work that well in the, in the space environment because of uh, long uh, delays and wireless media. Uh, the other thing is these satellites are all rotating, so they have to be scheduled in advance which one you want to connect to when. Uh, also, there are not enough ground stations, so a satellite cannot be in touch with the uh, Earth all the time, which is quite different from uh, LTE and mobile phones where you have towers all over and you can always be in touch. So I think those are some of the issues where uh, it's quite different in terms of research uh, from terrestrial environment. Okay, and um, what are the parameters of, of such connections that you're aiming at, I would say? Okay, our Important issues are uh, bandwidth, uh, how much data we can download from the satellite and at what rate. Uh, the other issue is the latency. Can we uh, reduce the latency? The third issue is the delay and the loss when the satellite does a handover because we are, think we are talking about uh, seamless connectivity. That means there should be no interruption in service when you are running an interactive data download. So I think those are the three or four main parameters we have to take into account. But the bandwidth, how, how big it's going to be or it is supposed to be? What's the goal? Uh, I think uh, in terms of bandwidth, the faster we can get, the easier it is for our, our applications. So uh, those issues are actually dealt with by the, uh, by the physical layer people. They design the uh, data link. Uh, what we want to do is use as much of it as possible so that we design protocols which will take the maximum uh, possible bandwidth out of the available bandwidth. So the issue is to be able to get as much bandwidth as possible from the link. So how much the link can provide, that's another group of people who work on that. Okay. So um, can you tell us about uh, the future of satellite communications? Right? How do you think? What's going to look like? Um, You'll find in the future that a lot of the satellites will be connected to the internet, 
So you should be able to access a lot of data from Earth uh, using the Internet protocols rather than uh, the dedicated lines which we now see where you have to actually download the data, put in a server, and then access the data offline. So uh, you will be able to see a lot of real-time data download uh, as soon as we connect the satellites to the Internet protocol. Right, so quite probably we'll, we're going to see plenty of uh, very high-quality pictures. Uh, it's, I don't know, Google Earth or something like this? Yeah, we should be able to um, get a lot of pictures and videos even uh, in real time. That's the important thing, that once you have it connected to the Internet, then you can actually control the data, uh, the resolution of the data, the way they're captured, the, the way they're downloaded. Uh, with the Internet protocol, you, can, you have a lot of applications which are already in use, and you can use those applications to, to do a lot of interesting stuff. You can develop a lot of applications which you cannot do over dedicated lines. So it's something like with a telephone line, you can only talk. But if you have internet protocol, you can talk, you can do web browsing, you can do voice over IP, you can do email, you can do web browsing. Lots of stuff you can do as soon as you connect to the internet protocol. So you should be able to do a lot of interesting stuff uh, with a lot of different applications when you uh, connect the satellites to the internet, space, internet protocol. Right, and those satellites are going to just keep broadcasting all the details to... Mm, well, some hubs located on the Earth, right? Uh, I think that that is true, but the model might change in the sense that if you want to download data, you sh should be able to uh, directly FTP into the satellite uh, and say that I want this data downloaded, uh, or you might even control the equipment in the satellite from the from the ground. So you'll have much better quality data, uh, much control over the data you download. Uh, that sort of stuff I think you should be able to do using the Internet Protocol. Right, so there is some form of uh, two-way communication. However, the download uh, side is much, much more important here, right? Yeah, the sort of applications we're looking at, uh, what NASA does is, uh, or the Earth, they do a lot of Earth observation. They observe the Earth using equipment up in the satellite. And all of the communications, or most of the communications, actually downloading the data down to Earth rather than transmitting anything to satellite. So this application is very different from uh, satellites which are mainly for communication and where you actually send data to the satellite and the satellite conveys the data to somewhere else. Uh, so this is very different. This is basically downloading data rather than using the satellites for communication. So communication is not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is downloading the data using the communication lines and the communication protocols. How do you think, um, is it a kind of a prerequisite, a kind of a, um, a condition that must be met, fulfilled, just to get uh, autonomous cars and maybe planes up and running finally uh, in a proper way? I think, I think you can uh, use satellites for communication. For example, previously, if you notice that uh, many years, uh, few years back, in planes you could access the internet when the plane was over the land because they were communicating with towers. But nowadays they have internet access in the planes even over the ocean and uh, over the mountains because nowadays the planes actually communicate with the satellite for for broadband access. So you, you'll see a lot. You'll see a lot of those applications which are coming, which will have global coverage. Wherever you go, uh, you can access the internet. Um, okay, um, but uh, when speaking about all this, uh, uh, as I said, autonomous cars, for for instance, right? They, right now, the the issue, the problem is that if they rely on some kind of maps, like for instance, Google Earth maps, Google Maps, um, they very often run out of date, right? Because new roads or streets are being built or, I don't know, um, there are some traffic jams, for instance. Uh, so at the moment, you have to rely on data that come from some sensors on Earth, but you cannot, almost real time, detect from, from, um, from above that there is some kind of cue, for instance, that you can or or, or you wish to omit, right? So uh, do you think such technology will help 
um, this area, I mean, for instance, autonomous cars? I think that's a very uh, good question. Uh, the issue here would be to develop equipment which are very high resolution so that they can take actually pictures of the traffic conditions uh, still from that distance. So, I mean, currently I don't think the, the cameras are that high resolution, but they can somehow, I think the resolution they have, I'm not 100% sure, but they might be able to detect the traffic conditions uh, and if we can integrate those data into the autonomous navigation systems, I think that would really improve the, um, the conditions. Uh, but even with the sort of sensors we have on ground, uh, I think we can pretty uh, closely detect the traffic conditions in almost real time uh, from all the sensors we have. But as you said, using the satellite will give us much more coverage. Uh, it's much easier to cover areas where there are no sensors, which there's no infrastructure there in terms of sensors. Uh, you can use those pictures. I think uh, that would be really cool uh, cool application of those uh, satellites. Yeah, because you don't have to cover all street roads and, uh, I don't know, highways with various kinds of ser uh, sensors and equipment, because you have eyes above uh, the earth, above the ground, that just take pictures, analyze them, and process properly. Yeah, I think you're very right. Yeah, once we can do that, it will be much, much more useful. I mean, that's what the satellites are used for, to have a coverage where there's no infrastructure, because satellites can be used for global coverage. So we can certainly use that for navigation as well. Okay. So think, thank you for conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk, and uh, I hope uh, it will be useful to someone, and uh, we'll, we'll talk, to you again, talk to you again sometime later on.